Megan Milbrath is a beekeeper, and she's kind of known in the area as the bee expert of Michigan, just kind of like the bee whisperer. She's an entomologist who's working with Michigan State Extension, and several people recommended her to us when we were thinking about where we wanted to source our honey from. When Lauren and I were starting the business, we knew we needed to learn a lot about bees and what was happening, and we were worried about, you know, would there be honey supply in two years or three years or four years? Are we going on a dead-end road here trying to create mead if we're going to run out of honey? So we wanted to do a lot of research and understand as much as we could about bees and what was happening. Megan helped us learn about what the apiaries in Michigan are going through. You've heard about colony collapse disorder, all the threats to the bees. What's, what is going on with bees? Yeah, so scientists agree that it's not just one thing, but a lot of um, threats and stresses coming from multiple places. And we, we talk about the big peas, so pests, parasites, poor nutrition, and pesticides. And they kind of all work together. So we have a lot of pests and parasites that are new to our honeybees. So our honeybees are not native to the United States. And once we started shipping things around the world, we started to bring in what we call emerging infectious diseases or pathogens that are new for them. The diseases are definitely a huge problem. And then we have issues with poor nutrition, which is just really loss of flowers on the landscape, and then pesticides. And they do work together because when you're weakened by one, you're more susceptible to the other. Just like a person. Exactly, it's the same thing. You have environmental threats from all over and then mixed with poor nutrition. And a lot of my fall is dedicated, well, late summer, all year, is dedicated to disease management. Um, that's one part that's made it a, a lot more work. So let's talk about all the different kinds of bee, because obviously, you know, the honeybee is the kind of the star, but there are so many different kinds. Yes. So in Michigan, we have about 460. In the U.S., it's about 3,000, or in North America, it's about 5,000. And globally, there's about 20,000 species of bees. Of bees? Yeah. Most of them are solitary bees. Not like the honeybee. Not like the honeybees. Honeybees are one of the only ones that have, we call them perennial colonies. So they are organisms that'll live for years. They have to be in a colony to survive. So an individual bee is technically an animal, but the organism that we talk about that reproduces is the superorganism, which is the colony as a whole. Can we take a look now? Yeah, absolutely. Please. So explain why the smoke works with the bees to calm them down. It redirects their attention, and then it also blocks their alarm pheromone. So the bees do a lot of their signaling through chemical signaling. And if I were to pinch one of them or to pop the hive too much, they're going to start alarming. And then um, if I use the smoke to block it, then it'll basically quiet her down. I'll only use it when they get keyed up at me. Okay. And we can watch their body language, and that'll tell how much they like the way we're moving through the hive. And that's just pine needles. That's pine needles. You can use um, basically anything that burns, bark, wood chips, of egg cartons, twine. All right, so we'll go check out those over there. OK. If I were to just stick my hand in there, that's when they would come out at me because they're on guarding behavior. I mean, you can see, like, some of them will probably follow my finger. But usually when I see a bunch of their faces like this, you just do a little bit of smoke and then they turn around and go find something yeah, they sure do. better to do besides sing me. When it's capped like this, it's called honey because it's been dried down, but all of this open stuff is nectar that's still getting dried. And it's amazing, how do they build the comb itself? So they're, the bees that are a little bit younger will produce wax out of their wax glands, which are all along their abdomen, and they'll produce it in these little tiny flakes, and then they'll take and they'll chew the flakes and they'll form the comb. But that process takes an enormous amount of energy. They have to go through a lot of food in order to actually make the comb. So some of these bees are bigger and fluffier. That's a drone, yeah. So these are the male bees. The drones, he's young, which is why he can't really fly that much. Oh, wow. 
And he's got this huge thorax and huge eyes. And he has that because his only job in life would be to catch females. And he can't sting. He doesn't have a stinger. He can't sting. He doesn't have the capacity. And then all of these on here are all workers. So those are all the females? Yep, these are all females. Wow. This is a full frame of honey. And then right in here, there's some drones that are getting born. Bees are amazing little creatures. Some of the more interesting facts that I, I learned about were things like, if they find a really good nectar source, they'll actually come back to the hive. And when they come back into the hive, they actually dance. And depending on how they move and how excited they are, will get the other bees' attention. And the more excited they are about their honey source, that will tell the other bees through their excitement, and the other bees will follow them to the, the nectar source. So it's kind of this fun feedback loop of, of communication in their, within their hive and to actually go get food and bring it back. How much nectar has to be gathered in order to be able to produce all of this honey? I mean, think about like a jar of honey. The volume is insane. Honey should be about a million dollars a jar. In all <laughs> honesty, if you think about what goes into it, because from each flower they visit, they can hardly get a tiny sip. The type of flower will depend on how wet the nectar is, but sometimes it can be 80% water. Wow. And they have to dry it down to less than 20%. It's an enormous amount of flowers and enormous effort to even just get a little teaspoon of honey. It's crazy. I know. And it's so easy to take for granted. Yes. And it's something that we literally cannot produce without bees. I mean, we can make sweetened things, but not with the enzymes and the properties of honey. We can't take floral nectar and turn it into something. It's, it's something that we actually do require insects in order to have the food product. This is probably one of my favorite visits. I mean, this is fascinating to me, and you almost never get a chance to get up close and personal right? with a beehive, because you need to be with someone who's experienced, so this is just awesome. Thank you so I, much. I love sharing it with people. They're such amazing creatures. Look at that guy. <laughs> you can keep him. <laughs> my pet bee.